we all strive to do on a daily basis is get our individuals and our community outside in the wider community. Um, Shereen, over to you. Hi. Um, to start with, I started my job in 2021, um, so it was kind of in the midst of COVID. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, by the time I started, um, residents weren't going out, you know, everyone was getting a little bit cagey, um, there was a lot of behaviours and stuff like that. Um, by the end of the year, we were able to go out and go for walks and stuff, um, but residents and relatives were asking, you know, when are you going to go out and do some night like, meaningful activities? So after discussing with um, the relatives in like co relatives coffee mornings, having residence meetings, I like my, I don't want to just pick the activities. It's all about being as person-centered as possible and making sure that the activities are individually led. That's very important because there's nothing worse than, can you imagine going out on an activity that you don't like? That would just be the worst thing in the world for me. Um, so after speaking to the, you know, the residents and families, um, I picked local activities to start with. Um, so we'd go like to the pub for lunch, um, go to the museum, the garden centre. When the residents became more comfortable with going out again, um, we picked further activities further afield. So it'd be like to the wildlife park, um, just different places. Um, so. Yeah, and it takes a lot, it takes a lot to put these things together, you know, you have to, we're lucky enough to have our own vehicles, so you have to book the vehicles and make sure the residents got enough money and all that kind of stuff, so, but it has benefit, benefited the residents um, and I'm excited to say that we just plan, we're planning a lot more activities, um, we do activities twice a week um, out in the community, so, so yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, person-centred led approaches is, you know, deciding on where they want to go in the community is really important. So thank you for highlighting that, Shereen. Connections. I know we've heard quite a bit about that this morning as well. Um, and these connections have proven both of a benefit um, to the older individuals that Ellie supports and their younger participants um, of, of promoting the feeling values and feeling cared and well-being. So Ellie, do you want to share about what are the benefits um, and how you've fostered those connections? Yeah, we're very lucky where we are that we now have so many different community connections that do involve children and different generations being able to come in and spend time and do different activities with our residents, but it wasn't easy. It took a lot of time, a lot of time and effort to build these connections. We have children coming in from an after school, uh, sorry, school holiday club where they do have done everything from decorating eggs and having an Easter egg hunt with our residents to having a forest school um, where they looked around the garden for bugs and made crafts with what they found, things like that. We take the residents down to one of the local schools and they read with the children um, where they get as much out of it as the, res as the children do, being able to have a purpose and feel like they're really giving something to their community that they might not otherwise, as well as the children getting a new perspective on being around people that they might not in the regular, they might not be around people with dementia every day, and, but the different generations, children, what I've found is they don't have as many preconceptions on what it's like to have dementia or what it's like to get old, they just see them at face value so they can really see who they are now, which I've seen a great benefit to our residents because they can truly be themselves. They don't have to worry about the person they're talking to, thinking about what might go wrong, how they might need to change what they're doing and thinking too much into it. The children will let them be who they are and truly just make bring so much joy. But like I said, it, it doesn't come easy, it really took time talking to the different groups um, we had within school we had a connection before covid and it became very difficult through covid we lost touch and even more difficult to get back in contact with them after covid but 
through talking to members of staff, we found that our hairdresser had children at the school, so we used that connection to build a connection with the school. And finally, we went down to the school with a group of residents and we took an Easter basket and it brought residents to them and made them see exactly the connection we were trying to build rather than over an email or a phone call and they couldn't see us. Having them see the residents, the residents show themselves their interest in making these connections with the children was really, really important in building these connections with the children, with the schools and the community groups. Amazing. Thank you. Um, so the activity providers group, the APA group, you might often hear that um, at, at talks or when we're doing lives, etc. So let me just tell you what that is. The activity providers advisory group was established at NAPA in 2021. Um, and it compromises of working activity providers um, to share knowledge, provide positive feedback, contribute to NAPA's projects and um, partnerships and currently um, any related resources and activity engagement. We have about 32 members um, within the APA group. Everyone here that's an APA member is welcome to join and represent, send someone to represent their organisation. Um, you just need to drop me an email and I'll be more than happy to, to add you along to that. Many of our members in the APA group have already participated in um, national campaigns uh, receive free products, um, subscriptions, um, trials, things, and even better, they've been compensated for their time in some cases. Um, so, having had the opportunity to share experiences, the APA group have also involved in live broadcasts. I am well known for inviting people to speak on lives, um, or write articles, blogs, um, and more importantly, some of our APA members have been named on research papers, which I think for ourselves at NAPA, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about that. The activity providers are playing that crucial part into research um, studies. Before we start, um, there is an amazing teacher in the room who always said to me that if I was presenting, one of the things I should do merely is start with a quote. So before we just get into the topic, I just... I just want to share something with you that I really felt resonated with me today as I was writing and preparing um, for this conversation with, with these amazing members. Um, it only takes one person to mobilise a community in, and inspire change. Even if you don't feel like you have that in you, it is in here. You have to believe in yourself. People will see your vision and they will follow your passion. It just really does capture the vision that we have here at Napa for the Urban Connected Communities. Um, and today we're going to hear all about that. So, less of the quotes. Let's hear a little bit more about why we're here. Lizzie, do you want to start with us by sharing your experience of connecting with libraries um, and why you've chose to highlight this connection today? Um, she's going to discuss where Lizzie began uh, and how the local library supported her and the advantages it brings to the individual she supports. Um, so what I want to say to begin with was I started my job three years ago um, and, and I'm a really shy person. So when they said you've got to go out and connect with the community, I thought, I don't know what am I going to do. My library was at the bottom of the road, so I thought, I'll go in there and I'll say hello. And, um, and they said, hello, and that was about it. And I thought, oh, what am I going to do? So I went back in and said, you know, I'm busy and I work up at the care home. And they said, oh, yeah, that's really nice. You can have um, an, a neighbourhood card and you can borrow books for your residents. Uh, great. I said, that's lovely. And you can have two volunteers come into the care home and they can read to residents and borrow books. And I thought, yeah, that's great. I've connected with my community. That's enough. You, you know, and then COVID came. This was before COVID, and then COVID came, and this is our library in Quentin. So I can't exactly remember what happened, but I think we could only borrow a few books, and I had to put them in a bag, and they had to go into isolation for 72 hours, and it was really, really hard work. And I felt because I've made the connection with the library, I just would send them an email occasionally, go, how's it going? We're okay, we really like the books. And this went on for two years. 
And I also thought, I know what, I'll do a mobile library for my care home and I'll wheel a trolley now. And it never worked for some reason. I couldn't get this library to work. And I think if I put it with the tea trolley or something, it might have worked. But anyway, so I carried on with this. Um, and then after COVID, um, we still had lockdowns. It's still quite hard work with library and just getting that momentum going. In the meantime, the library, because of COVID, had developed into a bit of a community resource. So they were seeing themselves as much more a part of the community in Clinton. Um, and so we were able to sort of uh, link into this a little bit more. Um, and so they put on, and they still have, a permanent display of dementia books, um, the leaflets, and that kind of thing. And it's very prominent in the library and right at the front, and they're really proud of this section. They also put together um, a, a book display for residents' families to come in and choose a book to bring up to the care home to read for their residents. And they encourage that, and they're really supportive um, when the residents' families come in. Again, that's right at the front of the library, and they really promote it. Um, and so we had the volunteers coming back in with the book reading and the borrowing. So that really works for us. Um, but the other thing that we did was, if we had a special event on, we had birds of prey coming to the library. And I had two of my students go down to the library and say, we'd like some display books um, about birds of prey. And they came back with this bag, the library had gone round, and put these books together for us. So we sort of carry on with it. I really like working with the library. It's not exciting, it's not dynamic, but it's consistent and it's there for my residents and my residents' families. And um, we sort of like, they, they, they have volunteers who are really interested in us. Um, the manager has stayed the same for the last three or four years because that's one thing that's really hard with community links is you set up a lovely community link and then they say we're moving on. But with the library, it's just lovely, so we've just developed, and that's it. Thank you, Lizzie, and I think that word consistency is really important when you're establishing.